My dudes and dudettes, I have been having just great fun diving deep into much of the concept art and unimplemented features of the Don't Starve franchise as of late, and I say, why not just keep the fun going then? We've covered but some of the original ideas, hat for the franchise itself, as yes, there is even more to share there, and only just recently have we taken a look at what could have been since the games have been released. Not now, however, I found a treasure trove that even I didn't know existed, and with the focus being on what could have been in Reign of Giants and Shipwrecked in the last two showcases, I think it's time we turn most of our attention to another Don't Starve DLC, Hamlet. Let's get to it. And oh boy, do we have a good one to start here today, as what if I told you that our plant-loving boy Wormwood almost came out looking like one of these things? Yes folks, early Wormwood concept art can be found, and it's all quite fascinating truly, especially when they're giving off mandrake and or mushroom vibes already. But that's not all. Wormwood seemingly went through numerous renditions before becoming the figure we know today. However, he was just steps away from being something familiar yet strikingly different. This guy right here. For you see, this design leaked many moons ago, and we knew that we were getting a brand new character by the name of Wormwood. And given the fact that there were even designs for blooming stages, I'd say things were really close to being finalized. Heck, we can even see this very character donning various alterations of bramble armor, how their green thumb crafts would have looked like, and the alternative looks of the bramble traps. Very cool. And this is but the start of the video for Pete's sake. And honestly, it only gets better here as we look to go bigger and badder. Say hello to the early concepts of one of the biggest bads of Don't Starve, the Iron Hulk. For those of you who have played and or seen Hamlet, you know that the Hulk is in pieces and must be assembled to begin the fight, and appears as if that concept was always in Clay's plan. Legs, head, hands, you name it, and there were different ideas for it. Most notably, an anti-gravity Hulk, which would have been nuts. But as time progressed, they certainly narrowed the possibilities and got down to business, determining what each piece would potentially do separately, let alone once assembled. And things look pretty darn close to how they stand today there especially with the legs and hands. So then, of course came the overall look of the mechanical beast when fully put together, and it also seems like they flirted with the idea of a tall, hulking mast of walking parts at first. However, in this last piece, we can clearly see that the final renditions and ultimate choice for the Iron Hulk are present in the bottom row there. Very cool. And heck, makes me want to fight the boss again. But speaking of bosses, Hamlet ain't the only experience that is going to be shown here today, as a select few shipwreck concepts escaped our last showcase here, like the quacking art before you now. And from the get-go, it looks like the general look were there, and that's not surprising. But what is surprising is the ideas behind little beasts like the quack gets and other fight mechanics called ink explosions. Not too sure about the former, however the latter really would have spiced things up in the fight given that we can only assume that these ink explosions would have blinded us, making navigating the quacken's tentacles and the waves they produce much more difficult. Neat stuff. Oh, then of course, there is the seal NATO, who mostly resembles what we know of today, sure, but it almost seems as if the quote-unquote seal was nearly a tiger-looking thing at first. So, perhaps this early design concept actually led to the inspiration behind the tiger shark and her babies. Interesting. Know what else is interesting? The Pugilisk fight within Don't Starve Hamlet. It is unique in the fact that it asks us to target weak points instead of the usual stand and deliver nonsense combat style of the franchise. It is one that requires you to be constantly on the move and be constantly aware at all times, and it even has rewarding awards, which is not something that can always be said, mind you. What can also be said is how cool 
cool many of these concepts are, as we almost got like a drill worm thing to deal with, a rocky version like Onyx or something, and spooky bug type designs. Very cool. I personally also find the BFB to be pretty darn cool too, in design and function within the game. So, I'm happy to see some various renditions of it myself. It's a shame, though, that I can't seem to find anything on the rest of the beast apart from these different leg styles, but holy crap. With the one on the very left looking very tall bird-like, could you just bloody imagine a tall bird that tall? Crazy. Just like the BFB itself, really, given how it's like three bloody birds in one or something. At least with the tongue. Seems like they knew what they wanted, but I'd actually be curious to know whether or not it was ever considered an encounterable boss at some point. Now that would have been something. These little guys are quite something as well. Rabid Beetles. And if you've played and or seen anyone play through Humid Season in Hamlet, you know just how much of a nuisance these little guys can be. And for the most part, it looks like their life cycle remained intact. It's just all the before and in between nonsense that certainly changed. Pretty much none of the designs look like the actual Glowfly artwork in game here today, which is pretty neat to see actually. And in the cocoon phase, it is far more simple like in-game to boot than it looks like here. Good stuff though. But they all can't be winners, folks. Like Fleps here. Honestly, this early concept is darn near identical to what we have and know of today, but like, just not blue-green essentially. Oh, but by the by, screw Fleps because they're bloody annoying little demons. But from annoying to downright gorgeous, the early concept art for Rainbow Jellyfish is spectacular, as it gives just so much more than a mob's design potential for us to think about. For one thing, I am genuinely curious about these bioluminescent shrimp of some description and the fancy light shows at the bottom there. I also wonder what the early versions of the coral nubbins at the left were going to do before they became a way to transplant reefs. And I gotta say, that the designs for the jellyfish all would have been welcomed in my book. Beautiful stuff. So then, might as well keep the color flowing, as not everything needs to be black and white. Oh, and let's dip back into Hamlet for a couple last segments here as well, as we get to get a look at some of the early designs of the Slanty Shanty. At least the versions that we players can craft with the house deed. And many of these homes actually made it to the final release of Hamlet, be them a player home or otherwise. So that's nice. Know what are not so nice? Vampire bats. The beasts that essentially take the place of hounds within Don't Starve Hamlet. They're fast, they're very numerous, and they pack a punch. Oh, and they call many cave clefts home, and it looks like Clay had their ideal version of such in mind at the right there. Good stuff. Early alternatives to the temple ruin entrances can also be found. And while they would later just all be made to appear the same, with but the statues atop of them marking their distinctions, I do actually wonder if letting some of these concepts slip away for a more simple approach was actually the right idea. But whatever the case, seems they already shared in the idea of having different statues mark different sites. And the whole overgrown entrances thing certainly made it from the page in of the game. And one last Hamlet design before we look to wrap up here. Wagstaff's Thumper. It was once a mere smasher thing. It was once meant to punch the earth and give it a left hook so great, and it was once a literal pecking machine. Interesting. But moving on here, and really the two interesting things regarding this early draw up on the shipwrecked birds here are the fact that we once again almost had rats in Don't Starve for like the third time, and whatever the heck the blue stuff is at the left there. And I really want to know now. Ah, but here's something we do know. Crocodogs. Not much to pick apart here, as it seems their designs were good from the get-go, but happy to share them anyways. However, this last one is the one that certainly grabbed my attention. A collection of food and potential food sources that were meant to be within Don't Starve Shipwreck. 
plant. Now, the lotus flowers and the radishes would eventually make their way over to Don't Starve Hamlet, albeit without these little bowl recipes, whatever the heck they are. But the entire bottom row would and is still nowhere to be found. And it looks to be a group of sea cucumbers and some leaf of some sort. It's interesting. And apparently, there was to be a way to grow meat, or just maybe just food in general, off of coral reefs. And that would have been cool. But there you have it, everyone. A much longer look at some concept art for Don't Starve Hamlet and Don't Starve Shipwrecked than I could have predicted. That said, I thoroughly enjoyed taking the time to share it with you all, as many of this was even new to me, too. So I hope to continue to take a look at some down the line. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Let me know what you think about all this yourself down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.